So I just went over the fuel pump relay location and which terminals the bridge to activate the pump. So I'll go ahead and make that connection so we can get a reading off the pump here. Okay, it looks like we're at 55 PSI. It looks about a pound or two over. And that's most likely due to the fill filter being restricted. But otherwise, we're pretty close as we have a three and a half bar fuel pressure regulator in this car. So now what I'll do is shut the pump down, put the fill pump relay back in, and start the car to make sure we get a pressure drop at idle. Then I'll goose the motor a few times to make sure we get a rise in pressure. And that will tell us that the fuel pressure regulator is working and that it has vacuum to the intake manifold. Okay, it may hold at 50 PSI for about 15 seconds until the 3 to 2 control valve kicks off. And there it just kicked off. Basically, the running loss solenoid in the valve kicks pressure straight to the fuel rail uh, to purge it out. And then it kicks off and allows the fuel to recirculate through the valve inst instead of recirculating through the fuel rail so it doesn't heat the fuel as it's going through. It's kind of like a returnless uh, fuel system. And it was found on 95 BMWs and up, so you may or may not have that. So I'll go ahead and goose the motor and see what kind of rating we get. Okay, so that looked really good. If you did not see a sweep on your needle, then I would check the vacuum line between the intake and fuel pressure regulator. And if that checks out okay, then you may want to take a vacuum test gauge and hook it straight up to the fuel pressure regulator and see if it holds vacuum, because it may have a ruptured diaphragm. So next, we'll move on to some troubleshooting. So the test I did showed that the fuel pump and fuel pressure regulator are working properly. The pressure was a little bit high at idle, but I think it's due to the fill filter being a little bit restricted as we're measuring pressure before the filter. So I think that's what caused that little spike in pressure there. So I'll change it out when I get a chance. So I'm going to go over a few procedures that I would perform if I came across low fuel pressure or no pressure at all. So I'll go ahead and kick the pump back on to get started. So if I came across low fuel pressure, the first thing I would do is check the car battery to make sure there's at least 10 and a half volts there. And if it wasn't, then I would have to recharge the battery and then come back and retest the fuel pressure again. If I still don't see an increase in pressure, then I need to find out if it's the fuel pump or the fuel pressure regulator causing the fuel pressure drop. So what I would do is take my hose pinch pliers and squeeze off this line here after our T. 
and give it a little squeeze. Okay, as you can see, the pressure went up. So that tells me that the fill pump is okay and that the fill pressure regulator would have been the cause of the low fuel pressure drop. So I would head in that direction if that were to happen to me. Now, if I didn't see any pressure increase when I squeeze that hose, then you would have to replace the pump because it's not pushing enough pressure. So that's a little something you can do to figure out, you know, which part is failing. So the next thing I want to check out is the internal check valve that's inside the fuel pump, which is not repairable, but its job is to keep pressure in the fuel line after you shut the engine off. So you have easy cranking the next time you come back to start the engine, you know. Usually if it fails, it will cause long extended starting, like especially in the morning or like after work. It'll take quite a while to start the engine. So I'll go ahead and shut the pump back off and we'll take a look at it. Okay, what you would do is take a recording off your fuel pressure gauge, which this one's at around 48 PSI. And over a 20 minute span, you come back and check it again to see how far it dropped. You're allowed seven to eight pounds of fuel pressure loss within 20 minutes. If you see like a lot more than that, like, you know, 15, 20 pound, of fuel pressure loss, then you have to find out if it's the fill pump check valve leaking, or if you have a leak in your fuel line, or if your fuel injectors are leaking. So to find out which one it is, what you would want to do is kick your pump back on, get your pressure back up to where it was, turn off the pump, take your hose line pinch pliers, and clamp off this side of the line. And I would hold it there for about 10 minutes at least. And if you see a pressure drop, that tells you that you have a leak from this point to your, between this point and your fuel rail. And most of the time it ends up being the fuel injectors leaking Although you could have a fill line leak, but it would be pretty obvious. You probably smell it. So if you don't see a pressure drop with this test, then that means your fill pump check valve is causing the fast bleed down on your fill pressure gauge. So that's the way to check those two. Now, if your pump passes the pressure test, but it can't hold the pressure after you shut it down, what you can do is install an inline fill pump check valve that uh, the dealer sells. And basically it has a fuel flow arrow which shows you the way the fuel flows. And it plugs in kind of like this. The check valve would plug into your feed line and the other end would plug into your fill pump and you would tuck it down inside the well here just like that and they work really great and they're inexpensive and here's the part number so 16 I think they're under 20 bucks. So it's a little trick you can do to get the car going again. 
So the next thing we can check is uh, a no start situation at, as in if your fill pump is not turning on. So we'll check that now. So you want to grab your voltmeter, set it to 12 volt DC, get your plugs out of the pump, and then turn your pump back on by bridging that connection. So the black plug, there's a green and violet wire, which is your positive, and a brown wire, which is your negative. So you want to tap in like this and take a reading off it. So we have 12.12 .12 volts here. So if you're, if you're getting power at this black plug and your pump's not turning on, then you have to replace the pump because it's bad. Now if you saw no power here, what you would want to do is tap into the positive side your lead here. Then take the other side and ground it to chassis ground. Okay, so we have 12.12 .12 volts. So that tells us that the positive wire is, is hot. So maybe your ground on this plug is bad and that's why you're not reading the 12 volts. So set your voltmeter to continuity. plug into the brown wire with your lead. And then touch this at chassis ground. And there we go, we have continuity. So if you had no, no continuity there, that would tell you that you have no ground signal from this. So you'd want to check that wiring out. Now if you're going to test this with the fill pump relay in place, you won't get any power here. If you, if you just turn the ignition on, you will see power for like a, a sec, couple seconds. And that's the pr which primes the pump. But it won't happen again for like another five to ten minutes, if I recall. So it's like a one-time shot to get power here with just a key on. But if you want to see constant power here, you have to crank the engine over and keep it cranking. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're going to test a plug without bridging the connection at the relay. So one thing I forgot to go over is the fill pump check valve um, scenarios that I've seen. When I come across a bad check valve, I, I've never seen like a partially bad check valve. When I find bad ones, they look like this on the gauge. It just bleeds right out and that, that causes really hard starting. Your pump is trying to power its way through to get pressure up and it's just bleeding right back and it, it just doesn't work out too well. 
So that's kind of what I've seen over the years on bad check valves. So as long as yours is holding pressure and it's a steady, steady drop, like really, really slow, your check valve should be okay. So that's pretty much it for testing. I hope this helps somebody out. So thanks for watching.